And that would, that's the title. My topic today will be personal sin curses. Satan wants us to make certain choices. He'll do his job of tempting us to try to just to make wrong choices that will bring curses upon us. And the Spirit of God will draw us to make choices that will bring blessings upon us. It all come down to what we choose. Okay, so just a little bit my review. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1, It shall come to pass that if you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do all His commandments which I command you, it's not hinting or suggestion, that you do all His commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set you on high above all nations. Amen. What's God thought for you? To set you high. on high. Set now, where does Satan want to bring you? Down. Way down. Amen? Yeah, yes. Okay, now, now look at verse... Okay, from verse 1 all the way through verse 14, it tells you all the blessings that will come upon you if we hearken diligently and we obey God's voice. Now, verse 15 to the end of the chapter is the curses. Now, look at verse 15. But it, shall, but it shall come to pass if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe all His commandments and the statutes which I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtaking you. Okay, so we have a choice. Do we want to be overcome with blessing or overcome with curses? Now, look right here if you don't mind. Okay, so basically... We, we come to a place of a crossroads within our life. And we can choose death, we can choose life, we can choose cursing, yes. we can choose blessing, yes. we can choose to be full of demons, or we can be full of the Holy Spirit. We, we can choose... Uh, see, there are people all over the, all over planet Earth that say they love Jesus, but they leave with the devil. They come with the devil, they leave with the devil, and they serve the devil out there. And so that's what we call a lie, that's uh, deception. Okay, turn to Exodus chapter 15. And we'll cover a little bit of ground here. Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. If thou will, if thou will diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and if we would do with that which is right in the sight, and give ear unto his commandment, and keep all of his statutes, none of these diseases that were brought upon the Egyptian will come upon thee, for I am the Lord thy God that will heal thee. Amen. You see a promise in there? Yeah. What's God's thought to the to the obedient? Heal. Okay, Exodus uh, chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19, verse 4. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, Egypt, Egypt represents the world and speaks of bondage. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I bore you upon eagle's wing, and I, God, I brought you to myself. Yes. And when you get to God Himself, when you get into the presence of God, what happens to you, you realize, this is better than anything or anyone that the Amen. world has taught. And when you get there, that's a, that brings the freedom. To, to get there, you got to begin by faith, but when you start getting in His presence, his presence, in His presence, there's fullness of joy. Yeah. So when you get there, that's what kept me from 1975, from alcohol, drugs, and immorality, and all the stuff that comes from the world. Because when you get in the presence, so that's what God wants to do. He doesn't just want to bring us to a church building. He wants to bring us to the God of the church. Now when you get there, the, when you really be with God, and in such a way, your life would be changed. So God says, I brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will, obey my voice indeed. Okay, so you, do you and I have something to, to do with this? Yes. We've got to make choices, right? Yeah. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice, now here's where many people go wrong. They think, I, I come to church, I tolerate the church service, I, I try to find the softest, the most gentlest, I, I want to go to a church that get me in and out before the cheap game's over, so I want to watch football, and I want them to tell me that God loves me, and I, I'll never go to hell, and so that, that's why I'll, I'll choose, and they think that they're winning. That's a life in the pit of hell. Yes. We, it doesn't make us a Christian to come and hear what the Spirit is saying. We must hear and we must do. Yes. It's not the hearers that are justified. It's the yes. doers of the Word. Okay, so they will. For, Book of James says, For a man to know what to do, and to do with it not to him, it is. Yes. Okay, so that's what we need to understand. Today or any day, Hebrews chapter 3 said, Today, if you hear His Lord, do not harden your heart as they did that they did to provoke God, departing from a living God because of the deceitfulness of sin. Hebrews 4.2 said, The word preached did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith with them that heard it. 
Hebrews 5.11 said, save that you are dull of hearing. Okay, so we are, there are many people all around planet Earth, and this is the place where they would come and hide. But there's, there's people that doesn't mind coming to a dead church service. They can daydream, space out, lust out to the office of sex, and, they, and think about wicked things within the heart. Okay, we can get out of the world, and they, and they think that they're Christian. That's not true. Okay, so very important that we understand we, we are accountable for what we hear and what we know. Amen. We're accountable. Okay, so uh, in, okay, ver, again, verse 5. Now, if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure. You shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. What's God's thought for you? What is God's thought? That you be a peculiar treasure above all people. Now, who didn't want you? Who, who didn't want you to get there? Amen. Okay, God has a plan for you, and the devil has a plan for you. And it all comes down to what we choose. For all, uh, I want you to be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, and you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words. Uh, that's not God's thought towards you, okay? Now, let's go to um, uh, just on the other side of the page, or one one page on there, Exodus chapter 20, and verse 4, or verse 3. Thou shalt have no other God. Now, basically, for the most part, what we're going to be talking about today is personal sin curses. And in other words, Satan will try to... Uh, here's the best. Here's the way I, that I explain this. Is that in Genesis chapter 3, Adam and God had given Adam and Eve a pretty good deal. Okay, so then Satan showed up in the form of a snake and began to talk to Adam and Eve and he began to tempt them. Satan needed cooperation of Adam and Eve's will. He needed them to make a choice to choose. Uh, so when they made a choice for their will, it brought a whole bunch of devastation and curses upon Adam and Eve. And then people will say to me, well, Pastor Bill, are you saying they're consequences of the sin? I don't believe they're consequences of the sin. So I tell them, well, you ask Adam and Eve. The, the, the choice that they make are still affecting us today. And then, so this one scripture today is going to talk a little bit about generational curses that pass it down through family. There's things that run in family. And I, I'll put it this way, that uh, the medical field, if you go to apply for health insurance, or you go to apply for life insurance, and you make out the application, they're going to ask you a question. Yeah. Does cancer run your family? Does diabetes run your family? Yeah. Does uh, multiple sclerosis <laughs> run your family? Because yeah. they understand things run in family. Yeah. And see, God knew that from, from the very beginning. Yeah. They'll see what we call generation. Okay, so in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make it to thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water beneath. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. I visit, I visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generation. Now, see, basically what happens is, see, we may, all of us today, we may be in here, and there may be th certain things upon us, because what happened with Ma and Paul and Grandma and Grandpa and Great Grandma and, gra and Grandpa. Okay, there could be things that are passed down to the third and fourth generation, and every generation keeps sinning, keeps passing it down until someone stops and someone get right with God and understand how to stop that and break that, that it doesn't go any further. Amen. Okay, so I just wanted to share that one scripture that says we're already going to already going to be in uh, in in Deuteronomy. Uh, I mean Exodus. All right, turn to uh, turn to Deuteronomy chapter thirty. I want to lay this foundation that we're, we're going to be bouncing around a little bit because I'm a, we're going to say the same thing in different direction. We're going to do different scripture. I'll, I'll, the Spirit of God wants to understand something here. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. It shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee. Okay, so there, now look right up here again. Okay, this is what we need to understand is that you don't just make choices and there's no consequence. If you choose sin, then you choose the consequence of the sin. Okay, so if you choose, if you if you obey, if you if you obey God's scripture, then you get the blessings of God. Okay, so we're going to see this what this says over and over again. Okay, the blessing and the curse which I have said before thee, and He lets us make the choice. God doesn't make us love Him. He doesn't make us serve us. He'll draw us. He'll convict us. He'll deal with it. He'll create circumstances to get our attention. But He wants cooperation of our will. He doesn't make robots that that have to serve Him, uh, like like the wrong kind of uh, slave there. But He want 
is, is that we, we serve Him because we love Him. Amen. We love Him because He first loved us. Yes. Okay, so He said, I said before thee, Amen. thou shalt call, thou shalt call them to mind all the nations whether the Lord thy God had driven thee. And thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and thou shalt obey His voice according to all that I command you this day, thou and thy children and all of your heart and all of your soul. Now we're going to go down to uh, verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise the heart. Now here's what we need to understand. Okay, this is the people that fell away that God's going to bring them back and He's going to bless them. Now when He begins to do, He will begin to circumcise their heart. In other words, out of the mouth comes the abundance of the heart. There can be things within the heart. The Bible said murders and adulteries and fornication and uh, theft and murder can come out of a heart. It says in the book of Matthew. Okay, so there can be things within the heart that when we get to find, we get contaminated. So what God say, I'm going to circumcise. I'm going to circumcise you. I'm going to help you with that. Yes. So his, the word circumcision means a literal cutting away. Amen. So how did that so caution says a circumcision made without hand? How's that done? Yeah. It is done by the Spirit of God. Yeah. God will go in and He will begin to remove things from a heart. He will begin to renew our minds. Okay. And the Lord thy God shall circumcise the heart. And then there's there's other scripture where God tells us to circumcise the heart. So there's yeah. things that we need to break and there's things that, that, that God would do. And when, we, when we work in cooperation with God, then what He brings us to a place of wholeness and freedom. Yes. Now verse 8. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed, okay, Amen. say what well, we're talking about generational curses, but there's also generational blessing. Yes. So the blessing, when when mom and dad get right, it begins to pass down blessing unto their children. Okay, so I will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed or your children to love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, that you may that you may live, live, live. that you may live. Amen. And that word live may that you may be lively. That Amen. you may be alive, that you may be quickened. Amen. Now, can, can you see the difference between coming to church and being bored, dead, frustrated, unfulfilled, and dissatisfied? Or you can be so alive, you can be so quickened, you can be so moved by the Spirit of God. That's Amen. what God wants to do. That's why the circumcision, that anything demonic, Amen. satanic, dark within it, God will remove that yeah, to bring the very light of God in there so that you may live. So the, with all of our hearts, so strength and mind, so that we may live, that we may be lively, that we may be alive, that we may be yes. quickened. We're going to be so alive, we can't, yes. it's hard to sit down, it's hard to yes. shut up. Yes. We've got to sing, we've got yes. to pray, we've got to dance, we've got, yes. we got to shout, we've got to win it. Amen. And the Lord thy God will put all, now, instead of you and I getting cursed, here's what will happen in verse 7. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon your enemies. Yeah. Wow. And upon them that hate you. Yes. And upon them that persecute you. Wow. They say here this is why yeah. unforgiveness is forbidden fruit. Yes. See you because God will not deal with our enemies yes. until we forgive. Yes. Yeah. Now here's what here's Amen. what happens. When you understand when you understand that God will fight these battles for us, yes. but not until we forgive. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so God will deal with our enemies in that way. So that's why it's very important that we forgive first, so that God will then God will begin to deal with them. Amen. Okay, verse eight, and thou shalt return. Okay, so you make a mistake, you fall away, you backslide, you become lukewarm, you boo boo, yes. and uh, verse eight, thou shalt return and obey God. the Amen. voice of the Lord. Now, so awesome. see, here's what a lot of people try to do. They try to. They think, well, I, I come to church and I can, I can drink, I can drug, I can fornicate, I can lie, I can cheat, I can steal, I can give, I can do whatever I want to do. I, all I need to do is confess it, and I'm still going to heaven. It's a life from hell because yeah. there's no repentance yeah. unless we repent. Yeah. You shall likewise Amen. perish. It says yeah. in, in Luke chapter 13. I think it's around verse three. Okay, so there's confession. So that's why God said that you shall return. Verse eight. You shall come, return and you shall obey the voice of the Lord thy God to do all his command, which I command you this day. Now, why is he commanding? Because he wants you to win. Because Father God loves you and he wants you to win. He didn't want you to lose, okay? Uh, in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 55, and I, I will say that uh, there's degrees of understanding this. And uh, I, I think I'm still learning how important the scripture is, I think, as Isaiah 55, I think, verse 8, it said, God said, My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Yeah. And my ways are higher than your ways. Has mm -hmm. God ever told you 
to do something or not to do something and, and do what in agreement? Yeah. Thou shalt not know God, I think that I should because. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. And see, because you, he, his thoughts are so much higher, yeah. we can't see. Yeah. We, we see limited. Where he sees the end thereof, right. yeah. I want to do something. He doesn't want me to do it. There's a power struggle, so that I have to, by faith, choose the right thing. Even yeah. the written part of me wants to do the wrong thing. Amen. In other words, I think I'm winning. Right. Yeah. I think I know more than God. But when the the real test is when you really want to do something, he says no. Right. Mm. There's where the test comes in. And then when you do, when you do what God says to do, rather than you want to do, see, I can't see the end thereof. Because I, I, I see I see the fruit thereof, but I don't see the root where it goes to. Right. And so then when you choose, and then when it comes out, oh my God, and God, you are, you are so much higher. Your thoughts are so much higher than mine. Your ways are so much higher than mine. That, that thank you, God, for protecting me. That you feel loved, that you feel protected. Okay, now. Oh, I'm trying to lay a foundation here. Be patient with me, okay? Because I want you to see, to understand the blessing and cursing and the death and life. Verse 9. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of your hand. Amen. Do you see Amen. blessing there? Yes. Do you see favor there? Yes. Do you see prosperity there? Yes. What's God thought towards you? Prosperity. What does He want to do for God's people? Amen. The Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of the hand. Now let me just say this, and I'm not, I'm not putting it in because I, I want you to understand. When I first got saved, when uh, I remember my heathen days, I remember moving from one place to another. And I had a great big stereo. I put my stereo in the trunk of my car. <laughs> Everything else I owned, you could put in the back seat of the car. You can't do that today. Right. I, what I'm wow. telling you, I had very little because sin had brought me into poverty. And both my mom and dad were raised with po in poverty. I mean, utter poverty, especially especially my dad. Uh, there were three brothers, and uh, the brothers had to sleep sideways, sideways in one bed. Come on. That's that's wow. that's wow. what they that's what they were raised in. There was one bed, and they and the three brothers slept in the same bed sideways. Okay, so then my dad broke the, the the curse of poverty off of the family, and then I put it back upon myself by huh? my sin. Right. Okay, so what does God want to do with poverty? Break it. Break it. Break he it. wants to break it and bring you into. Amen. Now see, that's what we have to understand: of out of and into. Out of and into. Amen. What you don't want to do is stay in the same condition and whatever the realm of it is, and all these different realms right here that you see right there, mainly physically, spiritually, financially, sexually, emotionally, parenting, ministerially, morally, socially, job skills, parenting skills, education, family, relationship, your heart and your will. Now, if uh, now none of you none of you would know this, but if anybody that I was raised with, and anybody that I hung with, and partied with, anybody from back home that really knew my life, if they would, if you would have went to any of them and said, one day, Bill is going to teach parenting skills. <laughs> they would have thought, you must be insane. Yeah. See, what I'm telling you, and, and Nero was discussing this in Corinthians, I have not seen, ear not heard, it has not entered into the hearts of men the great thing that God has in store for you, but He will reveal them to you by His Spirit. Yes. Satan doesn't want you to get out of the place into the realm of the Spirit yeah. that you can see the yeah. supernatural, the inheritance that God has for you. Yeah. He will give you purpose, a sense of yeah. identity. Your yeah. life will have meaning. Yeah. Your life will have value. Yeah. He has the great inheritance yeah. for you. And Satan wants you to be blind to it and think, because I come to a church... Because I come to a church building, I'm winning. Right. I've never really come to God and develop a relationship with God. And so I remain in barrenness. I, re I remain in, in destruction and desolation. And I miss what God has written. But God said, the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of your hands and the fruit of your body. Amen. Now what does that mean with the fruit of your body? Your children. Amen. Your children will be blessed. And the fruit of your body, the fruit of your cattle. Yeah. And you know, if you're a farmer, look out. You're going to have a bunch of cattle. And the fruit of your land, you you plant you plant a, a crop out there that's going to grow. Okay, so it says the fruit of your body, the fruit of your cattle, the fruit of your land. Do you see blessing right there? Yeah. What does God thought for God people? Amen. What does God want to do for you? Blessing. What does God want to do for His people? Okay, okay so when you understand this right here, that there's death. God, we're going to see. Uh, I don't want to steal my thunder. Let me get let me get back here. 
Okay, so, but there's a condition here. That's what we really need to understand is that it's not enough to put a body in a church building. We need to we need to meet with God. We need a relationship with God. We need to know God. We need the God of the kingdom to be in us. We need the kingdom to be in heart, to be in our mind, to be in our body. Know you not that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. Okay, the Lord thy God will make you plenteous in every way. The Lord thy God again will rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over your father. First, uh, let's go to verse... Um, Okay, we're going to go down to verse 15. Now, this is what I started to say, and I, I held it back. This is very important when you, when you understand this right here. Verse 15. This is what God is saying. I have said before you this day, life and good, death and evil. Now, what he's saying here is that you can make the choice. He's not going to make you. He's not going to make you choose good over evil here. Do everything. He wants you to choose good over evil. He wants you to choose life over death. He wants you to choose heaven over hell. He wants you to choose Jesus over the devil. He wants you to choose blessings over curses. He, but he allows us to make the choice for ourselves. And he's not going to make you love him. He's not going to be. He's gonna, gonna, not going to beat on you to make you love him. Who's going to fall in love with someone that's going to beat you up? Okay, so he says, "See, I've said before you this day, life and good, death and evil." And that I command you this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in His way, to keep His commandments and His statutes and His judgment. Why? Why does He want us to do that? That you may live, again, that means be lively, be alive, and be, to be quickened. I mean, what's that? Amen. That you may be alive, that you may be quickened, that you may be lively, that you may multiply. Yeah. And that the Lord thy God shall bless thee. What's God want to do for you? Amen. He wants to bless you. In the land, everywhere that you go to possess it. But, verse 17, but if your heart turn away so that you will not hear, but then you be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce it to you this day that you shall surely perish. The word perish is, doesn't mean that you make a mistake and you die. Well, here's what it means. It means you lose. Yeah. That's been, I, I, don't, I don't like losing. I may want to win. Amen. I may want to win. Okay? I denounce it to you this day that you shall surely perish which it also mean and be destroyed. Okay, so that a curse of destruction can be put upon us, that we shall perish and be wander away, and we will not escape. And that if you pro that you shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether you pass over joy to go into possess. Now, very important what it says right here, verse 19. I call heaven and earth according against this day against you, that I have said before you, death and life, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life Amen. that both you and your seed may live. Thank you, Jesus. Can you see what he's saying right here? Now, my, my whole point in this is to try to get people to understand that in this, in this overview of blessing and curses, that under, understanding uh, the different kind of curses, that this is what we call personal sin curses. Okay, when someone chooses death over life, is God the problem, the devil the problem, or are they their own problem? They're their own problem. They, because they made a they made a choice. Okay, so when we come to, that's why Satan wants to do. Satan wants you to bring you to a place of temptation and make the temptation look better than what God is for you. Yeah. He wants to make the things of the world look so much bigger yeah. and better than what God has for you. He doesn't add, we got to add one plus one to come over two, yeah. that there's curses and there's blessing, and it comes down to what we choose. Yes. Okay, that's why Satan, there, there's prophetic word that Satan wants to weaken us spiritually. So that we wouldn't eat, we wouldn't drink, so that we become vulnerable, so we would be the yeah. natural mind can't comprehend things of the spirit. Yeah. Okay, so he all Satan really needs to do to defeat us is cause them to become so naturally minded yeah. that we can't understand spiritual things. Yeah. To be carly minded is death, yeah. but to be spiritually minded yeah. is life. Yeah. I've got a whole lot to do with the condition of my yeah. mind. Don't you? Yeah. Yeah. See what I'm saying? There's a, that's why when we understand, that's why we read the word. It's not a law, it's not a legalism. It is that God wants to speak to you. He wants to change our mind from being carnal, which means to be carnally minded is different than to be spiritually minded. It's life. So He wants to be so alive, so uh, so life be, so quickened that we're, so we are raised up above the things below. Okay. Amen. God says, I said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life. That both you and your seed may live, that you may love the Lord thy God, that you may obey His voice, 
that you may cleave unto him, for he is thy he is your life. Yes, Amen. He is your life. Yes, you are. Now, the reason many times when people don't feel that is because they put their bodies in church, but they never really got get the God of the church, the kingdom really established in them. Right. Well, I'll say for many years I didn't understand how important the heart and the mind was. The heart and the mind and the thoughts and the motives. You got to really want God to to really allow, allow God to circumcise your heart, renew your mind, deal with your self will, and to bring into captivity every thought to the beings of Jesus Christ. Okay, whenever we become lazy spiritually, we we uh, and we start praying, we start reading the word, and church attention goes down, and bad attitudes begin to come in, then we begin to get weakened, and as the prophetic word says today, we start becoming vulnerable because we're not eating and we're not drinking, and then Satan begins to move in. So Satan would create certain certain circumstances within your life yeah. to get you dry, to make you vulnerable, because he's looking in, in boxing language. Where's my comrade, Archie? Well, I, well, I got I got several boxing <laughs> comrades in here. In boxing language, they're going to work on the body to try to get you to subconsciously drop the hands. So they come in with a knockout punch. That was yes. smoking Joe Frazier. That's what smoking Joe Frazier did. Yes. He beat you. He would beat you in the ribs. Round after round, he would come after you, he would pursue you, and he would beat you in the ribs until you begin to hurt so bad that you begin subconsciously to drop your head that he would come for a knockout fight. That's what, that's what Satan wants to do. That's why Satan wants yeah. us to dry up in prayer time, in Bible reading, in church attendance, and singing and praising God, and responding properly to God so that he can get to you. He's trying to make us vulnerable. Okay, so one of the things I'm trying to do uh, with at least three messages. It gets you to understand that there's different things about curses. And uh, the reason this is important is that many times we can uh, cast a demon out, but it may come back in because it has a legal right. The legal right is the curse. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of different curses, and I'm not going to get into all, uh, naming all of them today. But there's different curses, and sometimes that curse has to be uh, identified. It has to be confessed. It has to be repented. Yeah. When the curse has been, in my opinion, and I want you to understand that different people will teach us differently. And I believe not only confess whatever came in, the legal right of the curse, and we'll explain more of that later, but that curse has to be confessed, repented of, renounced, and broken. Then the demon, I believe that there's a demon enforcing the curse. Then I believe that the demon needs to be cast out. Okay, so we could just say, I break that curse, but the demon's still in there. The demons still have it, causing havoc, and so that's why it's important that I felt like just take time out from the deliverance thing of Wednesday night, and we're going to be focused on breaking curses for a while. And so I'm just taking time this morning just to educate you and teach you, because God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Amen. So we just want you to know how Satan operates, that he, the reason he tempts you, the reason he lies to you, the reason Satan tried to get you angry at God, so that you'd be so upset at God, you'd be hurting and Satan wants us to become so angry at God, we'll make decisions to hurt God. Right. Mm. And that opens up the door yeah. for, the, for Satan to come in. That will put a curse upon us. And, uh, and the, the demon will come in to enforce the curse. And, and that's what God wants to set us free from. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about something a little bit ugly here for a little bit, okay? Then we're going to go somewhere else. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 27. Now, I, I taught at 28 last, last week, Deuteronomy chapter 27. And I trust we're mature enough to understand this. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 14. The Levites shall speak and say to the men of Israel with a loud voice. Verse 15. Cursed is the man that makes an engraven or molten image. Now, what, we're gonna, what I want you to see is that there's consequences upon sin. I want you to understand that every sin has has a consequence. Every, the choices that we make, and what is said before, it's either death or life, blessing or cursing, that we need to make choices. Okay, so what we're looking at here, in, in chapter 28, we talk about the blessing, we talk about the curses, and there's more curses here in chapter 27. Cursed is the man that makes any graven image or molten image an abomination to the Lord. And the work of his hands, the crab been putting it in a secret place, and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Amen. Okay, now, 
Uh, turn to the left there just a little bit to Deuteronomy chapter 27 without getting into, because uh, this gets into a little bit of occultic curses, and we're not really so much talking about occultic curses today, but I want to, there's one thing about the graven image. Deuteronomy chapter 20, Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 25. The graven images of your God you shall burn with, of, of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Talking about going into the land okay, of the, that God had given to them. So that's the type of the world. The, the, when thou got the graven image of the world, you shall burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or the gold that is upon them. You shall not take it into thee, lest you be snared therein for his abomination unto the Lord thy God. Neither shall you bring an abomination to your house. Okay, there are certain things like pornography that we can bring into your house that will bring curse upon our house and upon our family. Okay, there are certain music, there are certain, yeah. certain, uh, there are certain magazines, there are yes. certain music, there are certain people you don't want to bring in, there are certain idols. Mm -hmm. When uh, Pastor Jane and I got married, there was this, uh, she had her office downstairs and uh, she moved the office upstairs and, and there was uh, all of a sudden uh, people, we were suffering from insomnia, we couldn't sleep and I noticed everybody's on edge and a little bit irritable. So I started walking through the house praying and I asked God, show me there's something in this house, there's something in this house. That, uh, that we can't sleep, and uh, people on the edge were irritable and a little sharp with one another. And it kept coming back to this wooden carved bird. And it was a wooden bird. So I talked to Pastor Jane. She said it came from somebody had given it to her from another country. And so I took it out of the backyard and I burned it. Amen. And from that moment on, we could sleep very well. And we weren't on edge. There was something in our house. And so this is what I want you to understand. Know you not that you are the temple. So you can have a physical help, but knowing that you're temple, there be something in us. There could be a false god within us, a demon to curse within us. There could be something in our house that's affecting the whole atmosphere of the house. Okay, so what God is, what we need to understand, and God is teaching, He wants you to know how to be it. So it's a cleansing. That when Jesus came in John chapter two, He came to He came to the temple, and He saw they're buying and they're selling. He said, "No, my house should be called a house of prayer." So he does a cleansing of the house. Amen. Okay, so uh, we're, uh, right back there with the green and black book on the uh, next to the top above John Rome's head, the green and the black book, there's a, a book back there on spiritual house cleansing. It talks about a whole bunch of things that you don't want to be in your house. Okay, there are certain things you do not want in your house. Yeah. And so then it tells you how to do a cleansing of your house, and there's a cleansing of this house. Yeah. And know you know that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. There are certain things within our house because there are certain things within our heart. Yeah. So when we allow God to cleanse this house, it cleanses our natural house. Yeah. Okay, so Jesus comes to the church and said, I see buyers, I see the sellers, I'm going to cast them all out because we got to get prayer back into the house of God. Yes, so when he cast out, this is very important, he cast out the buyers and the sellers, and when he cast them out, I think it's Luke's version of this, it doesn't say this in John, but I think it's in Luke's version where this happened. They said, then the sick and the lame and the blind came and they were healed. Yes. Before, well, uh, until, until the house was cleansed, until the buyers and the sellers were cast out, there wasn't any healing of the sick and the, the lame were not walking. Okay, so we talked about that uh, Friday night about the lame. Okay, so the, I left that out on Friday night's bed. I forgot to, put, forgot to put that in there. That's what we need to understand. There can be things in the church. There can be things in our house. There can be things within us yeah. that hinders our ability to walk yes. in the Spirit. That's what the lame is. Yeah. The lame yeah. speaks of an inability to walk in the Spirit in such a way that we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. It also speaks of that we, as being spiritually lame, we're not walking in the power and in the demonstration of the Spirit of the living God. We begin to become comfortable settling for the crumbs underneath the table. And there's this place of fullness yeah. in the things of God. Amen. Okay, now let me finish this in Deuteronomy chapter 7. Okay, he said, Don't be snared by they think it's an abomination to the Lord. Verse 26, And thou shalt not bring an abomination to your house, lest thou be a curse of thee like it, but thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a curse of thing. You don't want a curse of thing to be within your house. No, and I want to expound upon that one more thing. And uh, a lot of us said deliverance spirits, we are... We turn, turn to Psalms 115, if you don't mind. Because I, I want to, I'm taking time to at least bring you at least three messages on this, just so that you have an understanding. Because God wants us, God wants us to be free. He wants curses to be broken uh, within our life. Let me just, let me just share this, and I, I say this often. 
But I'm going to say it one more time because uh, I want to make sure I'm a communicator, right, even though several have, have heard this more than once. Then uh, when I begin to come into curses, uh, it, it was a new day for me. It was like a new revelation. So I began to ask God, reveal to me if there's any curses upon my life. So I'm, I'm walking back and forth and praying. And then uh, I, I read that I had read that uh, using the Ouija board could bring a curse upon you. And I remember, my God, when I was a child, we had a Ouija board. So I'd go to Pastor Jan, and I had Pastor Jan pray for me. And, and uh, two or three great big demons came out of me. Because you're coming in contact, you're communicating with demons. Yes, yes. And so with the Ouija board, I came in contact with demons, yes, and it put curses upon me. Yes. That's a type of a cold curse. And what I'm saying is, there are certain things that can be put upon us that will hinder our ability to hear God's voice, yeah. our ability to see in the yeah. Spirit, our ability to speak by the Spirit, our ability to re- feel God's presence, yes. our ability to receive, to read the Word and get revelation knowledge of His of, of the of God's word, oh, yeah. it hinders our ability to operate the gifts of the Holy Spirit, yeah. and I want to illustrate that uh, for you in uh, the Psalms one fifteen. Yeah. Psalms one fifteen verse two says, "Wherefore shall the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in heaven, and He has done whatever He has pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hand." Now listen to what He says about the false gods. They have mouths. But they speak down. Just picture Buddha, okay? Yes. And they have mouth, but they do not speak. They have eyes, but they yeah. do not see. They have ears, but uh, but they do not hear. They have noses, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they handle not. They have feet, but they do not walk. They speak to those. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are likened to them, but so everyone that trusted in them. Okay, so when there's false God and there's trusting in false God, so what that saying is, is that... It's not that you're blind in the natural. These these images are blind in the natural. Well, what that does put the spiritual blindness upon it, put the spiritual deafness upon it, put the spiritual dumbness upon it, put the spiritual lameness upon it. And there's uh, we learned this from Frank Hammond, and it's in Frank Hammond's book above John Rome's head back there, the blue book on the top shelf right back there. And Frank Hammond teaches it that there's a curse by the name of spiritual hindrances, and the spiritual hindrance curse. Hinders us from hearing God's voice yes. and feeling His presence, reading the Word of God, receiving revelation knowledge of the Word, and it, it hinders us in, in praise and in worship, and it hinders us walking in spirit, and will hinder us in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, what I'm telling you, this I, 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 I'm ashamed of this. In the early years, I'd give a nice little lesson and say, "Well, let's all stand, and go home." Talked about a historical Jesus. I was a dead man that gave dead sermons to kill. Now, see what's going to happen today. We're going to bring a message, and to end this message, we're going to, I'm going to open this up over here, and I'm going to say two words. Praise God. Now, what I'm saying is, the two words are going to accomplish more than back in the 80s when I passed the church. I, was, I would talk for an hour. I would talk for an hour and say nothing. Amen. I went yeah. yes. for an hour and say nothing. And nothing was accomplished. Very little was ever accomplished. Yeah. Now more is accomplished by two words than by speaking for an hour before. Amen. That's why I feel so comfortable right here because uh, there's things that I could preach to try to elevate you. You might get excited, but you got the same thing you came in with. Amen. So now I'm. I'm trying to be, I'm trying not to be a hireling, I'm trying to be a shepherd. Yeah. I'm trying to put God in you. Amen. Amen. I'm trying not to use you to be the deed within me. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. So I can preach things that would make me look better. Come on, say to God. Amen. But you, you would leave change like you, you can. You can leave change here today. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Yes. If you want to. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. You saw Dave up and said, here this for a all of soup. Yeah. Come on. All right, let's go back to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 27. In verse 16, Cursed is he that said that light by his father and his mother, in other words, who dishonors his father and his mother. We'll say more about that in a little bit. 
Verse 17, Cursed is he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. Remove his neighbor's landmark. What did what did the white man do to the Indian? Cursed is he that removed landmark. Yeah. How did the white man? Yes. Those who listen by CD, I'm, I'm a white as a sheep. Okay, verse 18. I'm sorry, verse. Yeah, verse 18. Cursed is he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way. That's cruelty. Cruelty to, to handicap people. Yeah. Here's what I, here's what I'm saying. When you understand this, we, that that's just take that right there. That if someone is cruel to someone handicapped, mm -hmm. God knows it. Yes, He does. And see, there's a consequence. Someone could make that choice. No one, no one else around, and mistreat someone with a handicap. Yes, but is. God knows, yes. and it brings a consequence upon the person that mistreat someone with a handicap. Yeah. Yes. See that you, uh, and we'll say more about that just a little bit. Go see that. That's what we need to understand. Okay, verse 19. Cursed is he that perverteth justice of the of the stranger, of the fatherless, and the widow. Now, mm -hmm. see to say the same thing right here. God is saying that if you oppress the defenseless, if someone comes, do you understand that here in America, that if someone comes from another nation, we mistreat them? Amen. Come on, say. Yes. If someone were to come here to America from another nation and we mistreat them in a wrong manner, okay, then th there's consequences upon that. Yes. So he says that, there's, that before it was removing the, the neighbor's landmark, here it is. And then they make the blind wander out of the way. Uh, in verse 19 it says, Then the stranger, in other words the foreigner, or the orphan, or the widow, if you were to mistreat any of those, God's saying that cursed to be cursed, that can be placed upon your life. Now what I'm saying is, is that someone can live their whole life with this curse upon them and then not have a clue because they think what's upon them is normal. Right. Yeah. See, because sure. they grew up with it, and and maybe their parents had, maybe their grandparents had, right. maybe five generations of the family had had the same thing within their life. Verse twenty: Cursed be the he that lieth with his father's wife, incest. Yeah. Because wow. he uncovereth his father's skirt. Verse twenty-one: Cursed is he that lieth with any manner of a beast. In um, mm -hmm. in other words, bestiality. Yes. Frank Haven, in that blue book up there, talk, Frank Haven talks about, I think he was in a foreign nation, if I remember right. And he, he was speaking in this church, if I remember right, it was a country church. And there was a man there that was insane. He had insane demons. And God gave, I think, his wife a word of knowledge. The reason this man had a word, had an insane spirit was because he had committed the sin of bestiality. Wow. Yeah. Now, they, so they told the man, here's the word of knowledge, and he didn't want to own up to it. He, you know, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. So, basically, when the man confessed, when the man repented, the curse was broken, the demon was cast out, and the man came back into his right mind. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Two to three or four years later, he goes back and speaks at the same church, and the man is still in his right mind. Yes, praise now, Jesus. Now see, what I'm, now what I'm telling you, this is what we're talking about. There's something far beyond coming in here, and we talk about a historical Jesus. That's nice. Mm -hmm. That's nice what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. That, that's nice. We talk about historical Jesus. It doesn't relate to us. So now we go home back to our electronic devices, and we forget what we're saying here. Right. Or we can hear what the Spirit is saying, we will allow God to give us a word. And then the word he gives us, there will be an assignment. And then we have a choice. Will we come into alignment with the assignment or will, we, or will we pretend we didn't hear? Amen. No response is response. What yes. God's saying, this, this right here is not just for Derek Prince or Frank Hammond. This is not just for Bill Sink and Pastor Bill or Pastor Brian. This is for every single person 
who has the faith that believe what God said. Amen. Yes. That God has He called you to Himself. He gave you power against unclean spirit. Yes. He gave you power over yes. all sickness and disease. So here's what He said. You want barrenness or you want fruitfulness? fruitfulness. You want powerlessness or you want the power of God? Amen. The power of God. You want no belief or do you want faith? Faith. Do you want defeat or do you want victory? Yeah. Victory. Two words are said to this man. Come out. He confesses to repent. The, the insanity was because of the sin. There are certain consequences that go with certain sin. The, and that would be that if someone has... Well, let, let me see if you could... This is pretty obvious, but tell me what the curse is. If, if a man does not forgive, he's turned over to the tormentors. tormentors. And that doesn't sound like a blessing, does it? No. Okay, so turned over to the tormentors. Uh, some of the tormentors could be headaches, could be insomnia, and many times the consequence with unforgiveness is arthritis. And depending on the degree of, of unforgiveness, uh, the unforgiveness that when it gets into hatred, it will go into, what's that one they call it, when the fingers curl? Rheumatoid. Rheumatoid, Rheumatoid arthritis. Yes. And I've known people that hate it. I mean, hate it. One or more people. Well, uh, the person I'm thinking about hated all men. Right. Hated all men, and there's men that hate all women. So it goes both ways. And this person is going into rheumatoid arthritis and had to have surgery because of the of the toes and the and the fingers going like this because the person refuses to forget. <laughs> all she needs to do is to forget, yeah. but she will not forget. This man confessed, this man repented. That was the legal right for the curse to come in. The, when he confessed, the legal right was broken. Now the demon is cast out, and the man is in his right mind. Amen. That's what we're talking about. Praise God. Now, see, here, here's what this is about. Here's what we're trying to develop. What we don't want to do, let me say what we're not doing. We don't want to come in here and get you in and out in 45 minutes to talk a little bit about a historical Jesus that doesn't deal with anything with our life today. I'm saying there's a now God. I'm saying that we want the kingdom of God in here to be so powerful Amen. that the crippled could come in Amen. and get walking. The sick could come in Amen. and get healed. The Amen. lost could come in and get saved. Yes. God. The, the captive could come in and get delivered. Those in, in destruction could come in and get restored. That's what I'm saying. Amen. And so there's, and what there are, under, he says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So we were trying to, what Jesus did with the 12, he multiplied his ministry. That's what God wants to do. He wants to multiply his ministry through each and every one of us. Okay, so then what God is doing, he's putting the ball in our court. You want this power? You want to operate in this? For whosoever will shall come. Okay, so this is why that all these different books, on this section over here, there's a whole bunch of books of prayer, and then there's books on Holy Spirit, then there's books on revival, then there's books on deliverance, there's books on curses, there's books on knee books, there's books on heaven, there's books on hell, there's books on dream interpretation. Okay, so we can devour yeah. the people coming in, they really, they really, they, they're coming to pre service prayer, they're coming to Saturday prayer, they're devouring these books and they're seeking God, they're praying, and they read the Bible, they grow so fast that the whole life has change, and God can use their life. Okay, yes, let me get back into this. Amen. Okay. Um, that verse 21, Cursed to he that, that lies with any man or beast has sex with an animal. It's, it's, it's shameful. I was shocked when I became a Christian to find out how often when I became a Christian became a minister to find out how, how much of that is going on. There's a curse that comes into people's lives for that. Okay, um, verse 22, Cursed is he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. We're talking about incense. And uh, put uh, verse 23 along with that curse that he that lieth with his mother-in-law. Now let me, let me, just, let me just say this. that I, I think the statistics are 6 out of 10 girls by the age of 18 by the age of 18 have been violated, abused, some type of sexual abuse. I think 4 out of 10 young boys in today's society yeah. are being sexually abused. Yeah. And this, this, this so much because of pornography, this is an abomination in, in the sight of God. And people that do that, there's curses that are placed upon these people that go around yes. and violating people. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that 
this this an abomination to Almighty God. Okay, verse twenty four. Cursed is he that smiteth his neighbor secretly. That's murder. Verse twenty five. Cursed is he that takes reward to slay an innocent person. Think of the mafia, but they got people that pay them so much money to knock someone off. Right. Secondly, think of the reward. Think of the think how much money the abortionists are making. Yes, they do. Yes. And so those the the people that are performing abortions are putting curses upon themselves. Yes. And if if you boo booed and you had an abortion, that's the sin of murder that can be confessed and repented, and yes. you need deliverance from that. Okay. Amen. All right, uh, verse 26, Cursed is he that confirmeth not all the words of these principles of God, and the people shall say amen. 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 All right, amen. let me go to some other things here. First Samuel, well, let me just say this. Turn to Romans 13. But First Samuel, let me get to Romans 13 myself so I don't forget In First Samuel chapter 15, the Bible says this, Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, yes. and stubbornness is as iniquity. Okay, so Saul was given, King Saul, first king, was given a word, and in the word there was an assignment. He did not come into alignment with the assignment. Now Saul then was rejected from being king because he rejected God's word. Okay, so then when the prophet of God, Samuel, comes in and he confronts Confronts Saul. What is what's this? I hear the uh, the bellowing of the sheep. Okay, so then Saul lashes out at Samuel the prophet. He he rents the garment of the prophet, and then Samuel the prophet whirls around and says, "Today the kingdom has been rent from you." Okay, so he was rejected from being king because he rejected the word of the Lord. Now the important thing that we need to understand about that right there is that. Saul there was rejected from being king, but he still has the title, he still has the position, but he no longer has the anointing, he has no provision of God, he doesn't have the favor of God, and God is not now not working for him, and the Spirit of God, the Bible says that the Spirit of God departed from Saul, and an evil spirit came and troubled him. See the difference? Yes. Okay, now, what I'm saying is, someone can come to church, and hear the word of the Lord, reject the word of the Lord, and we be rejected from being king. In other words, there's no dominion. We can still call ourselves a Christian. Right. Saul still called himself king. Other people still call him king. We could call ourselves a Christian. Other people could, might think we're a Christian, but we don't have the favor of God. We don't have the anointing of God because God gave us a word, and over and over again, we reject the word of the Lord. Right. That's why... For a man to know what to do, and to do it or not, to him it is okay. Okay, so this, there are certain things that again that we that they entered not in because of unbelief. of unbelief. Okay, so again Hebrew Hebrews four two says the word preached did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith, but then they heard it. You'd never want to come to the place that you feel comfortable coming and hearing. Amen. And go, well, that was that was nice. And then walk out the door and just totally forget whatever was said and do that for weeks, months, years, and even decades. Right. And convince that we're winning because we went to church. Okay, so that's what he's talking about in Hebrews 5.11, saying that we're dull of hearing. You would never want to become comfortable hearing God's voice and hardening our hearts. Amen. It's not the hearers that are justified, it's the doers that are justified. And we'll say more about that in just a little bit. Okay, we've got your Romans... Chapter 13. Now, let me just say now, we're going to we're gonna get you a little bit nitty gritty here, okay? Amen. And we're going to get to some grinding here a little bit. Amen. Romans chapter 13. Let every soul be in subjection to, to everyone that's in authority, all delegated power, all delegated authority. Does that include your supervisor? Yes. Okay. So there's governmental authority, there's church authority, and there's family authority. So now we're going to see now there, if there's consequences if we don't respond properly to authority. <clears throat> Every soul be subject to the high powers, for there is no power but that be of God. 
and the powers that be are ordained of God. Okay, so uh, can I be saved and go work at a factory and my supervisor be lost? Yeah. 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 But I need to submit to that supervisor because he's in that position. Yes. And see, I need to respect that authority. And if I have trouble with some of his fruits, I need to I need to submit to God and and ignore basically I can't change his fruits. It's between that's between him and God, okay? So the powers that be are ordained of God. Now remember the powers of God, there's governmental authority, there's church authority, there's family authority, so there's different kinds of authority. Okay, there's no powers. Uh, but the, but those that are ordained of God. Therefore, verse 2, whoever resists the, the authority, whoever resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. Mm. Well, they that resist, now watch this, okay, this is important, that if we struggle, we power struggle with authority, and, and I've done this since I've been a Christian. I, work on, I worked on a job, and then I go like, ah, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm called the ministry, I'll be here for a little bit, and I don't like now, you're not right with God, not right with God. I had a nasty attitude. And I, I wasn't right, okay? But God don't mean I got right. Verse 2, whoever resists the power, resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist, they that will not submit to authority, shall receive unto themselves damnation. Which means in the Greek, condemnation. It means judgment. Okay, now who's the problem? God, the devil, or the me resisting authority? Me resisting authority. Okay, so there's a uh, there's a an authority there that we want to come into alignment with. Verse three: For rulers are not a terror to good work, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power of the authority? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the slave. Okay, here's here's where that here's what I learned when I was up upon the job. And the supervisor left the room, or left the building. I didn't stop working. I didn't slow down working because I realized God's watching me. Yes. And it was working. Yes, I was working for God. Awesome. Yes. And when the people, eyes were on me, or no eyes upon me, yes. I knew that I knew that God knows what I'm doing. Yes. And so I began to work for God. And a uh, promotion, and after promotion, and uh, would would come to me because that uh, I was working in this one place, and I was working in this packing department. And this this one guy, uh, they hired me to be the second packer. And the first guy uh, would work. We would both of us we would work the ship, and he would come, he would get about twenty five packages done, and I'd get around two hundred fifty packages done. Oh, wow. And he came to me wow. and threatened me. <laughs> so I don't want you. I don't want you working that hard. I kept on working. So then he he was there long before me. So uh, he was there long before me. So when it came to lay some people up, guess who got laid off? Not me. Why did he get laid off? Because there's a record of how many packages were wrapped up. Wow. And they saw I wrapped up around two or fifty, and he's wrapping around two twenty five every night because he didn't want to work. Amen. Wow. The paycheck he didn't want to work. Yeah. Wow. I'm preaching better some of the things. Amen. Amen. When you mean like God wants to give, it never bothers me about being in a mall or being any place in public, and and they got cameras on me. Didn't bother me. Because when I got saved, they didn't have cameras watching everybody, <laughs> and I knew God was watching me. Yeah. Yeah. And I began to live that way. God watching me. Yeah. I began to I began yeah. to work for God. Amen. And Amen. there was no five finger discount after I got saved. Praise God. Praise God. One or two, you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> Verse three: Rulers are not a terror to good works, when, uh, but to the when I realized when I realized. See, before I got saved, ah, uh, hey, driving down the road now, I didn't like those cars with the red lights on top. <laughs> and if one of them happened to be behind me, I'm getting nervous. Because either I'm under the influence of, I'm under the influence of something, and I either, I've got something in my car. It's either powder, it's either weed, or it's alcohol. There's something in there that did me the whole lot. So I became real nervous when those cars were getting behind me. But I got saved in that car with <coughs> red lights came, was behind me. All of a sudden the light came on. There will be a thing in my car. I'm not, Amen. That guy's yeah. not my enemy. Yeah. yeah. God, he's there. Amen. Another terror to them the good. 
but to the evil. Yeah. Come on, because I had switched kingdoms. Yeah. I had slipped from darkness to light. Yeah. Yeah. The police are no longer a threat to me. I'm on the same team. Yeah. Yeah. Well, God, this is a change. Yeah. This is a whole lot of come on. Yeah. Verse 4, for he that's in authority is the minister of God. Wow. Wow. I'm going to tell you something that put me in a very good light. <laughs> but it's the truth. After I got saved, now before I got saved, after I got saved, I worked on the job and I had a nasty attitude. I'm not going to be here long. I'm not going to hear this. And I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm here just for a little bit. I'm, I'm out of here. And I had a nasty attitude and, every, and God dealt with me. And, and those watch my knee books read that they ever helped me. I had a nasty attitude and I was power struggling, a whole bunch of things, critical, fault finding, judgmental. And I'm self righteous as a junkyard dog. And God dealt with me and I'm in conflict with everybody. Here's a sign when there's conflict on your job, conflict at home, conflict at church. Conflict with everybody, everywhere, everywhere you go. Right. Well, let me put it this way: everywhere I went, I had conflict. Right. Mm. So I go, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> and I did watch my knee. They said, "You are the problem." Right. <laughs> you are the problem. Almost said, "Really, everywhere I go, I'm thinking it's all these people. These people need to get right." And watch my knee says. If you're on conflict everywhere you go, you are the problem. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's what it would be. Yeah. Oh my God. Now let me tell you what I did in this country. I went to all my co-workers and my supervisor and I said, I'm going to stop power struggling. I'm not going to make any decisions. I told us that whatever you'll decide, I go along with it. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, everything in my life changed. It does. Everything in my life changed. Mm. There was blessing upon the God, uh, job. There was blessing every word that I went, and the disfavor turned into favor. Yes. Praise yeah. God. The destruction turned into and, yes. and the blessings. Awesome. And what I'm saying is, we got to be real God, careful with our attitude because He says that yes. for, for yes. those in authority is a minister of God unto thee for good. But if you do that, which is evil, be afraid. That's my power. Oh my God! When the police were get behind me. And I've got, I've got something evil in there. Yeah, first of all, me. <laughs> the reason the evil things were in my car because I was evil. Oh, man. It's funny, look at powders and those oddball pills and the, and the weed wouldn't have been in there if it, if it hadn't been for me. So I'm telling you, when I realized, oh my God, I'm on the same side as the police? If you do that with Jesus, he will be afraid for he that bear not the sword in vain for he is a minister of God to a a revenger to execute wrath upon him that does evil. When I confess and repent and all these blessings and all this favor came upon me, I'm telling you it changed my life. Now hang hang Amen. on. Now I'm a, I used to say put on your seatbelt, but I'm gonna say put on your Ephesus suit. <laughs> Because we're going to deal with some issues. Amen. Turn to Ephesians. Oh. Uh, let's go to Ephesians 6. Uh, and then we'll bounce around there. Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with the promise, yes, that Lord. it may be well with you, that you may that you may live long, yes. that you may live long, mm -hmm. okay, when the children submit and honor it, it, it can bring a curse to dishonor Mom and Paul. Yes. Yeah. It can be a curse to, dis to dishonor your father and mother. Now yes. let me say that. Mom and Paul may have been a sinner. Right. Mom and Paul may have missed it in many, many ways. Yes. But there's an yeah. office. Amen. There's an office of a Mom and Paul. And it doesn't do any good to dishonor Mom and Paul. You don't have to lie that you know, say that whether or not saved. 
But you, what you don't want to do is go around dishonoring Amen. Mom and Paul. Because yes. it didn't cost Mom and Paul. Amen. Who will it cost? Children. Yes. Okay, so children, obey your parents to the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, for this is the first commandment of the promise. And the promise is that it may go well with you, that you may live long upon the earth. That's awesome. Okay, now, what we're going to begin to we're going to begin to deal with some issues. Usually when we get to this part of Ephesians, it gets real quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 4. Yes, Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. Okay, we, as, as daddies, we got to be, we can bring discipline, but they got, they got to feel loved. Yes. You, you, we can't rule our houses with the rod of iron. Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. Right, let me, so before I go any further, let me let me look right here just a minute. Let me let me just quote something so that you understand where I'm going and why. Yeah. In First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three, don't turn to it, but if you want to write it down. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three. And what it talks about, it talks about divine order. And here's what it says. Divine order is Father God, Jesus, the man or the husband, the wife, and then the children. Yes. If any one of those are out of order, it can create dysfunction. Daddies cannot come and demand submission of their wives and children when they're not obeying God. Right. That's true. Yes. It's, sure. Because yeah. it's hypocrisy. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. If mommy is not in submission to daddy and no. demanding submission from their children when she's not obedient or submitted to her husband, no. It's what we so if the man's not submitted to God and the, the wife is not submitted to the husband and the children not submitted mm -hmm. to the to the parents, it's called a dysfunctional family. Yeah. Things are out of order. Yes. It's whacked out. Yes. It's right. not going to work. It's not gonna work. Right. It's not gonna work. Right. You can you can you can talk it, but see the work. love, the anointing, the unity, the favor, the provision will not be there. Right. Yeah. Okay, so what happened now, I want, I want to just get that part. That's 1 Corinthians 11, 3, there's divine order, Father, Jesus, yes, the, the husband, the wife, and then the children. Now, be careful, children, because what you show as a child, just a few years will go by and you'll be <laughs> mom and <pop. laughs> And you will reap for your own children. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. that's true. true. So true. It is true. Well, say to God, what do you sow, you shall reap. Amen. Yes, that's true. Because we're going, we're going to get into some stuff here, okay? Now, fathers, do not provoke your children around. Don't rule the house. I'm going to walk around pooping. I'm the head of this here household. Everybody, all right, shut up and listen to me. <laughs> not going to work. No love. And we in ministry, we got to be careful. See, um, people don't care how much we know until they know how much we love yes, or yeah. how much yes, we care. Lord. Okay, we can be legalistic. Mm -hmm. We can set boundaries, but if there's no love in it, it's still barrenness. Yeah, that's right. There's no excitement. Yeah. What what you find out? If a man really loves God, he has no trouble submitting to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you find when a man really loves his wife, she has no trouble submitting. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's That's true. True. Good and when the children feel so loved and provided for, protected, defended, vindicated, they have no trouble submitting yeah. to mom and pop. Awesome. Sure. There's divine order. Mm -hmm. That's divine order. Yes. But one of both, any one of those be out of order, mm -hmm. it will create dysfunction. Mm -hmm. It has a domino effect. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about here, see, if you don't like the atmosphere in your mm -hmm. home, guess who created it mm -hmm. other than the people that live there? Yes. Okay, so there's where God wants the kingdom to come. There's things in our families because of things in the people that live there. Yes. There's things in this house because Amen. Yeah. I'm here. Yes, Lord. Come on, Sandy. You yes. see what I'm saying? Okay. Yes. So good. God's yeah. right. well, <laughs> Turn that the middle switch off. If you'll. 
No. No. Okay. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath or anger. Don't enrage them. Um, we daddies, we can't be so legalistic, laying down the law for every child, and they look at us so they know we're not obedient to God. I told you about getting quiet. Yeah. <laughs> See, when you get in this part of Ephesians, yes. this is this is what we're talking about dysfunction. This is what we're talking about barrenness. We're talking. Here's what we're talking about: faith works by love. See, not by threat of beating. It's work, faith works by love. Okay, when we lose our love for God, when we lose our love for people, then we get into legalism. We get in the laws, we get in the rules, we get to thou shalt not. And we, we, give, we become takers rather than become givers. Mm -hmm. You'll find out when we get in the flesh, you become a taker rather than a giver. When you get in the spirit, for yeah. uh, for God so love that he gave. Yeah. Okay, that's how you know when you, you're getting in the, in the flesh, you want everybody to get to you, but when you get in the spirit, you want to give to yeah. everybody else. Okay, so Father's <laughs> provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture. The word nurture there means, the word nurture means instruction and educate them. It means disciplinary correction. It means tutelage. It means training. Now, look right here just so I can explain it this way. God has made boundaries. And when Mom and Paul establish boundaries, children feel love. I can't tell you when when I lived in the inner city and I, I worked for Teen Challenge, how many kids would be out on the street? And, and you'd go, what does your mom and dad think about you being out on the street this late? They don't care. Mom and dad, right. mom, they're drinking right. drugs before and yes. they're lying. They're out there partying. Yes. They don't care. They don't care about me. The kids knew mom and Paul didn't care. Yes. yes. When we establish boundaries, Pastor Jan and I raised three cookie crumbers. Mm -hmm. Two of them are like two little angels, and one of them. <laughs> I can't tell you how many two hour talks I had. <laughs> and the two hour talk within the first 20 minutes, he would go right back and do it. <laughs> but when we would give him these talks, his attitude would change. Right. He felt love because we spent the time with him, instructing him. Yes. In the middle of all the warfare, I am laying in the bed. I'll never forget this. I told this Pastor Jane, I'm laying in the bed. And Pastor Jane had pictures on the wall of the three cookie crumbers. And the Spirit of God came upon me in a mighty way. And God said of this one cookie crumber that was wearing me out. Yes. God said about this cookie crumber, one day you'll be a tree of righteousness. Yes. Amen. I'm going like that. Sorry, am I having a spell? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. In the midst of darkness and trouble and tribulation, God can see the potential. Yes. Mm. And many times, the one that God uses the most what they would call the black sheep of the family. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The most hurting, wounded, rejected, mm -hmm. the one that suffered so much. Yes. God gives their life not just mm -hmm. an anointing, He gives them a double Amen. portion. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In the middle of right and everything's going on. It was just a supernatural experience and it's like the Spirit of God was all over and God said to me, and as soon as I'm, I'm, you can hear me talk, I heard God say this, He will be a tree of righteousness. Praise God. Mm -hmm. It has happened. Yes. Yeah. It has happened. Awesome. Yeah. And all, all that we went through with this cookie crumber, this cookie crumber out of the three loves me the most. Wow. Yeah. And respects me the most. That's beautiful. Yeah. Will come and kiss me on the cheek and calls me dad. Amen. This is why we keep coming back. I know I, I, I know I've said this before. I say this often. 
there's something so far beyond coming and putting our bodies in a church building, tolerating a church service, and leaving unconquered and unchanged. Yes. I'm saying that when we meet, and every one of us, here's the scripture, you and I need to work out our own salvation yes. with the fear yes. and the trembling. Yes, Lord That's Jesus. Philippians 2.12. That's what we got to do. I've got to touch God for myself yes, every day. Yes. Every church service. Amen. You can't touch God for me. I got That's to touch right. God for myself. Yes. I got to learn how to drink from this well right. for myself. Yes. And that prophetic word was so powerful today that yes. we've got to eat, we've got to drink. Yes. And we've got to learn how to eat and drink from God ourselves. We've got yes. to eat bread of life. We've got to drink of the spirit. We got to learn how to absorb, receive the very life of God. Yes. You can't live Christianity in the flesh. No. You can't do it. You will be miserable. Yes. You can't do it. It's impossible. Yes. The flesh profits nothing. Yes. It's the spirit that quickens. Yes. Yes. Okay, so then, no, the things that are blocking. Pastor Jane, would, would you get those three jars out and put them up here, my baby? Those three jars with yes. the songs in there. And, and remind me because the last time I forgot the pressure got too many class. Okay, let me get back here verse 4. And father, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. Don't enrage them. Correct them, but make them feel love. Yes. Bring them up in the nurture, the instruction, the education, the discipline, the, the tutelage, the training, and the admonition of the Lord. Okay, servants, be obedient to them that are your supervisors according to the flesh with fear and trembling and signals singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service. So you're you're not doing this. You're not going to be you're not going to work when the supervisor is in the room and then not work when he leaves. That's right. You know? <laughs> right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Very true. Well the eyes watching awesome. you are not watching you, you're going to keep on working. Amen. Right? Yeah. And when there's yeah, really awesome. no one else around, you're not going to sin. Amen. Where could you go? Where could you go it's and awesome. sin? That God would see it. Amen. 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 All right. Now hang on, cuz. Put on your asbestos suit, cuz. <laughs> we're going to talk about some stuff. Okay, chapter 5, verse 20. Giving thanks always to all things unto God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourself one to another in the fear of the Lord. Verse 22, wives. Submit yourself to your own husbands. Yes. The word sub means obey, be in subjection. Yes. Now, I'm going to say this another way. Okay? Let me say, I've already said this once. We as men, we as husbands, we can't go around demanding wives submit when I'm in rebellion to God. Yeah. What I so I shall read. Okay. What I'm saying is, well, I am so in love with God, and I'm so in love with my wife, she has no trouble. Amen. Yeah. That's beautiful. She has no trouble following where I'm leading. But if I'm not going anywhere, right. how can she follow me if I'm not going anywhere spiritually? Right. How can I be the leader? when I'm stationary. Wow. I can demand submission or I can earn. Amen. Yeah. My Amen. wife can go anywhere she wants to go because mm -hmm. I totally love her and I totally trust her. Yes, yes. 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 Thank you, now, she, her sister has called before and said <laughs> I'd like to pay her way to Florida and she'll come to me and, and she'll say, well, uh, what would you think about me going to for such and such time? And I go, baby, well, the way you work, you got a job out there and, and you work full time here, go get away. Yeah. Amen. See, there's something about love. Mm. And you can't fake Christianity. No, it's no, got no. to be real. We got to love God and we got to love people. Yeah. When I start loving myself, I start loving the world, I start loving pleasures more than being lovers of God, mm. then I get legalistic, I be begin demanding. Get controlling, yeah. begin to rule with an iron rod. Okay, so wives submit yourself unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. A wife is no more submitted to God than she is to her husband. That's true. Mm -hmm. You want to be real careful who you marry. 
Yes. 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 Yes.
then every one of us individuals, I got to deal with my stuff. Yes. You're going to have to deal with your yes. stuff. Yes. Yes. Lord. If I deal with my stuff and you deal with your stuff, but I get in trouble when I think, you know, Reverend, come out over there. He needs to. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Zane. See, if I come and you judge, critique me, and I critique you, we all go home. Nothing changes. Amen. <laughs> but if everybody, if everybody sees God for themselves, yes, Lord. and then God gives every one of us as individual, if God gives every one of us homework, yes. God will give me a word and in the word to be an assignment. Then He stands back and says, "Will Bill come into alignment with the assignment?" Will Pastor Bill come in the church and tell people what they ought to do while he's not doing what I'm telling him to do? Right. Mm. Yes, help That's us called bear. Yeah. Yes. That's called dead works. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. See, I'm saying that could be in our family. If there's, if there's no love, if there's law, there's legalism. Right. But if there's no love. Yeah. Love God, love people. When we are alive in God, when we are alive to God, you would rather someone else go first. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes, yes. Lord. Come on, Sage. Yes. That yes. the church should be holy and without blemish. Now, hang on. <coughs> Verse 28. So ought men ought to love their wives. As their own way. Men ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but will nourish and cherish it yet, even as the Lord of the church. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. That on that same thing, turn to First Peter. I told you to get quiet. <laughs> Every time you preach that, that section of the Bible, you get quiet. Uh -huh. First Peter chapter three. In verse 3 he says, Who's adorning? Let it not be that of the outward adorning of the plating of the hair, the wearing of the gold, and the putting on apparel. And that is not saying you can't do your hair. That's not saying you can't wear jewelry. It's not saying that. But let it be of the hidden man of the heart. So it says basically, yes, you can do what you want to do with your hair. Yes, you can wear jewelry. He said, but don't trust yeah. in that. It's more. Uh, let, let me put it this way. You'll see some attractive people. All kind of jewelry, hair all kind of done, but inside they are selfish. They're, they're like a hungry alligator. Yeah. That's how they treat yeah, people. Yeah. They're mean. They're selfish. They're yeah. arrogant. That's what this is saying. It's not saying you can't do your hair. It's not saying you can't wear jewelry. Okay, so but but uh, but let it be the hid man. Verse four. Let it be the hid man of the heart that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit. You ever heard that? Just a brash, just real loud people, just. Uh, uh, a bull, a china closet anointing, just roll out, it, which is in the sight of God a great price. For uh, when, whenever we become free enough, whenever we become free enough, we don't have to talk all the time yeah. to try to impress people how powerful or how much we know or how much we have. Mm. Whenever we realize God gave us two ears and only one mouth, yes. yeah. that's what I mean by that, that quiet, a, a beautiful yeah. spirit that will let other people talk. Yes. Yes. Okay, now, verse 5, we're going somewhere with this. Yes. Verse 5, and after this manner, in the old time, holy, holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves. Mm -hmm by being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, Amen. whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, 
do not be afraid with any amazement. Verse 7, the change. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life. Now, what I'm going to say right now, at the end of that scripture right there, it says, treat her with honor and respect mm -hmm. so that your prayers will not be hindered. Yes. A man can mistreat his wife, not love his wife, for 50 years, and for 50 years his prayers be hindered. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, that's what we're, we're talking about, personal sin curses. Right. The way I illustrate this is that I can't get up in the middle of the night when everyone else is sleeping, get in my car and drive downtown and find a hobo underneath a, a, a bridge and mistreat a hobo, then come back in my car thinking no one knows. Right. Hmm. But someone does know. That's right. Yes. Who knows? God. Uh, and the hobo. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Poor right. <laughs> hobo. And I know. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you really want to be careful yeah. how you treat other people. Yes, Lord. There's times, Jesus. Pastor Jan and I don't argue, we don't yell and scream at Every now and then, my voice tone <laughs> doesn't get an A. Right. <laughs> I might just be a little abrupt. Right. And God has the audacity. <laughs> I'll just say something that's just, just unloving. And I'll, I can't get one step of God says, I apologize. During the song service today, watching some of these people meeting with God puts the fear of God upon me. Yes. How dare I come in here and exalt myself with the beautiful people that are coming in here. People have the call of God upon the life that's so real, so powerful, go far beyond it. any of us adults in here. We have to be very, we have to understand Proverbs 5.21, for God is closely watching you. Yes. It weighs very carefully everything that you do. Yes. Not only how we talk to people, but the voice tone. Yes. We talk to them. Yes. We can demand submission. Or we can love them so much they're searching us out to follow where I'm going. But if I'm not going anywhere with God, why would they follow me? And I can say I'm the head of the household, but I'm not really the spiritual leader. Because if I'm the spiritual leader, I'm on a journey. But if I'm going nowhere, yes. mm. yeah. Amen. Amen. Do you understand what that is saying? Husbands dwell with them according to giving honor. Giving honor to the wife. How do I treat my wife out in public? <clears throat> what's my attitude towards her? What's my voice tone? Mm -hmm. Does she feel loved? Does she feel protected? Oh, yeah. This is what I'm trying to talk about. In the beginning, when you come in, you may be the, these, these what we call in, in Isaiah chapter 62, Get the rocks out of the road. I think it costs us stone. In the beginning, we may have the, the different strongholds within us. Then we go through a measure of deliverance and breaking curses, and you gain a whole bunch of ground. See, this cannot contain very much water. Why? It's full of rocks. It's not that you're not saved. This is how I was when I first got saved. This is why deliverance and breaking curses is so important. Yes, Lord. Is that this is how I was when I came to Christ. That's why I was so selfish 
because I was full of selfishness. Right. I was full of insecurity. So I built all these walls to control things then yeah. and to make all the decisions. Yeah. Somebody might make a choice that I... But after I went through some deliverance and breaking curses and confession and repentance, after I began to deal with my stuff, yes. I began to green ground. Green, green ground. Before I wanted the anointing, but I couldn't get the anointing because I was full. Yes. So now I'm gaining ground. And then now I'm encouraged to deal with my stuff. I still got a few down in there. <laughs> <Everyone>. <laughs> That's what we call the process. Yes, Lord. When you when you fall in love with learning, when you learn to love the process, you'll stop pretending and you understand, you will feel. Ah, here's what's going to so enable us to love our wives. You're going to feel so loved by Father. Yes. yes. You're going to feel so loved by Father God. You're going to want to give what you're experiencing. Yes. And it will no longer be a doctrine teaching a theory. Yeah. It will be a reality because yes, you are so full of love. Yes. You begin to look someone up. Who can I pour love out? Yes. And everybody comes around. You can begin to pour love out and not anger, not lust, and not selfishness, and not pride, yeah. and not anger. Because you are so full of love. Amen. Yes, Verse 20 says, by the fruit you shall know them. People are going to know me if I'm selfish, pride, controlling, manipulative, liar. Lay down the wall for everybody else who I'm not going to be to God myself. Wherefore, by the fruit you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will. Okay, so let me, when... <coughs> We really need to understand when we come. God wants to give us a word. Well, let me back up a little bit. First of all, He's got to deal with the pulpit. He's got to get the pulpit with the pulpit care that we are not hirelings, that we become shepherds, that we will fulfill the two greatest commands that we will love God, that we will love people, that we will not use the people to meet a need within us. As daddies, we can do the same thing use the family to meet a need. So we've got to put God first, we've got to put other people before ourselves. Okay, so when we understand then what God is trying to do, I'm not going to have time to go where I wanted to finish, um, but we talked about the prosperity, we talked about the restoration. It was back there in Deuteronomy, um, 
uh, third chapter thirty where, where it was. Okay, let me. Not everyone that said to me, "Lord, Lord, you're in the kingdom have been hidden." Does the will of my Father which is in heaven? There's something far beyond coming to the church and hearing about a historical Jesus. Rather, see what God wants to speak to you and I in the now. Now faith is. Yes. Now faith is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, so you may not have something in your life right now, but you got the faith to get it. Yes. That's a whole other story. But, but without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Yes. For He that cometh to God, not just to a church building, He that cometh to God must believe that God is present yes. and that God is a rewarder of them oh, that... Uh, put a lot of money in the offering. No. Yes. <laughs> Amen. But that He has rewarded them that diligently yes. seek Him. Amen. Okay, so we, we want... Why? Preach our spirit. Seek Him. Yes. Why is Sunday school? Prepare our heart. We want to seek Him in the Word. Yes. And, and why prayer in between? Get the anointing up. Why the praise? Why the worship? Seek Him. Through yes. praise. Lord. Seek Him through prayer. Seek Him through praise. Seek Him through worship. Amen. Seek Him through the yes, prayer. Lord. Seek Him through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Seek Him through what God's going to do then. Yes, so that we're going to receive something here. What we receive here is going to change our lives out there. Yes. We have to get something here that will change our life home. Amen. It will change our marriage at home. It will change our children home. It will change the atmosphere at home. It will change my attitude upon the job. And in the marketplace, yes. wherever I go, it's different. Amen. Everything yes. changes. Yes. It's rewarder of them that diligently seek it. Okay, let me... <coughs> yes, Lord. Not everyone says, Lord, Lord, shall we in the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven, we've said, it's not the hearers that are justified, it's the doers that are justified. Verse 22, many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have not, haven't have we, have we prophesied in your name? <coughs> now let, let me, I, I want to make this clear. You want to be careful coming and during the whole song service trying to brew up a tongue or prophecy while ignoring God the whole song service. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. You're still lost. You may think you're winning. You may walk home. You may go home with your chest pooped out. They, I can't even tell. <laughs> right. But you ignored him the whole song service. Right. Yeah. You can give yourself so to God. You talk about coming into powerful prophecy. Yes. Mm -hmm. You will prophesy the pain off the wall when you meet with God. I, I'll... No, there's none in here now, but uh, in the past we've had people in here during the whole song service. They're looking down every row. <laughs> yeah. They're looking at everybody. They're trying to bring up a word. And they ignore God. They didn't sing. They didn't praise. They didn't worship. Mm -hmm. They're trying to bring up a word. Wow. Oh, you got a button. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I got no button. <laughs> <laughs> they thought they were winning. They walked out feeling really good about themselves while they ignored God during the whole song service. And they thought they were winning. Right. Getting their car feel really good about themselves. But they ignore God. And the end result is you do that over years, you end up in bareness. Gotta right. keep us moving. Have you not prophesied in your name and in your name cast out devils? Yeah. And in your name done many, many uh, many wonderful works? See we it's all about relationship with God. Then will I profess on them, I never knew you depart I never knew you. You never were right. Depart from me, I never knew you. Ye that work in iniquity. The word iniquity means un wickedness, unrighteousness, illegal lawlessness. I said that to say this, verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, hears them and does them. Okay, so, think of people. <clears throat> think of people that you may know that's heard pray without ceasing. And they've heard it for 20, 30, 40, 50 years and had a little bit of no prayer life. Study to show yourself a group. Don't even read the Bible. Um, let's just talk today. Husband be in subjection to God. Husbands love your wives. Wives be in subjection to your husband. Children obey your parents. See, there's just hours of preaching just right there. Just hours. Okay, if we hear that, if we go out and nothing changes, what have we just said to God? I, I 
came to church. I came to church. I heard what the Spirit said, but I didn't do. So he said, therefore, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart is in the day that provoke God to anger, departing from the living God because of the deceitfulness of sin. One of the things that I, I say over and over again, Satan wants to lie to us and deceive us. Satan, de de Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Satan wants to seduce us into making choices. We are convinced we're winning. In reality, we're losing. Yes. Yeah. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and will do them, I'll liken him unto a wise man that built his house or his life or his marriage or his family upon a rock. Who's the rock? Jesus. Okay, now you're going to see. He that hears and does is like a wise man that builds his life, his marriage, his children, his family upon the rock. Yes. And verse 25, Then the rain descended, the floods came, yes, the is. winds blew, and be vehemently upon the house, but it did not fall. Amen. Why did it not fall? No, it there be no divorce. There be no adultery. Amen. Because it was founded upon the rock. Jesus. Amen. The rock. Verse 26, Now everyone that hears these sayings of mine, and will not do them, should be likened to a foolish man. Now what I'm saying is, is all over planet Earth as people come to church and they hear about the historical Jesus, they, do, they don't do a thing that's said from the pulpit. Well, and secondly, too many hirelings in the pulpit are afraid to tell people the truth. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Yes. It's kind of a two-way thing there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we saw the wise man, now we're going to see the unwise man. Everyone that hears these saints of mine and will not do them shall be likened to a foolish man that built his house upon the sand. Now, I want you to just picture Florida and building a house on the sandy beach. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, yes. I Oh, I, let me tell you about this sandy beach. I'm going to build my house right upon this sandy beach. A little bit of time goes by. And then the rain came, the floods came, and the wind blew, and the beautiful mount, and it, what did it do? It fell. Why did it fall? Because it was built upon sand, the sinking sand. And great was the fall of it. Now, we're going to come in for landing. First close, you're, you're figuring me out. That's why they giggle. First close. When you go all the way back to the beginning, he says, I set before you death and life, cursing and blessing. You make the choice what you want. Yes, Lord. Don't get angry at God. Don't blame the church. Don't blame the preacher. Don't blame other people when things don't go well. Amen. When you marry wrong, you build your life, you build your marriage, you build your family, you build your children upon sinking sand. Yes. So then, when adultery comes in, when things fall apart, someone starts beating you up, someone controls you. Amen. Don't get mad at God. Right. When you knew. Yes. When you understand what God is trying to do, He's trying to guarantee you to win. Yes. <coughs> yes. I said before you, see, let me put, put this up here. This is what He sets before every one of us, and each and every one of us make the choice. Yes. He is not going to make you, He'll convict you. People will pray for you. Yes. A plumber's wife prayed for me for two and a half years before I got saved. Wow. And I'm thinking, what is going on in my life? What, what weird thing? She made, her prayer life began to create all kinds of circumstances within my life. And so basically, this you choose. Do you want death? Do you want life? Do you want sickness or do you want health? Yeah. Do you want poverty? Do you want prosperity? 
I'll, I'll take it to, and in the, in the time to come, I'm going to begin, I'm trying to give you an overview that you just understand the general, the, the, there's some general things here, and then we're going to get more specific. We're going to begin to deal with one curse at a time until the Lord leads us to do something different. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do, we're going to we'll teach on that curse, and then we'll break that individual thing. And then when we break the curse, we'll renounce it, the thing that was that was said, the things that was done, we'll renounce it, we'll confess it, we'll repent, and then we'll cast a demon that's enforcing the curse out. Amen. And over a process of time, here's what's going to happen. Is that you're going to go from like this to here, you're going to gain ground. Yes, Lord. And what happens is when you get to this place, you will be able to contain so much water, so much of God's Spirit. No one will have to tell you to love your mate. Yeah. Yeah. No one had to tell you to submit to authority. Yeah. You'd be so alive in God. Yes. The anointing of God, the presence of God would be so real to you. You don't want to do a single thing that would take away the anointing. Amen. Yes, Lord. I know people that don't even want to step on an ant. Amen. <laughs> it's true. Amen. Let me pop in and see if for anything else would remain. Um, all right, uh, Revelation 22, then we're very close. Prophetic team, would you tune in? Don't, you don't need me to turn to this scripture. Prophetic team, just tune in. We can, we can become guilty in Pentecost they, that we want to preach and we want to elevate people we want people we think we won because we'll spring from the chandeliers and we in Pentecost sometimes once you once you break you break free and you're able you're able to to preach it and, and people get elevated we need we also need teaching yes amen and I want you to understand that God wants you to understand this so that you will make wise choices. He wants you walking out. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. He wants you to walk out that door. Not, 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 not talking. The Pastor Bill has an anointing. The Pastor Bill can preach. You walk out with knowledge that will guarantee you to win. Amen. He is sitting before you, death and life, and you're going to understand. Yes. You're going to understand that if it looks like a snake, it's, a snake. it's slithering like a snake. Mm -hmm. Right. His tongue's right on like a snake. Mm -hmm. And it's got snake eyes. It must be a snake. Amen. What I'm saying is, God loves you, and He wants you to win. Yes. And so he's not going to demand that we love him. Amen. When you understand that God is for you, and if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. So Satan is trying you and I to make decisions that will bring stuff upon ourselves. So the topic today, even though my title is Key of Obedience. Can you see the connection? Obedience brings the blessings of God, yes. brings the favor of God. But the topic today is blessings or cursing you could choose because the theme, there's a theme here. And the theme is, the theme is personal sin curses. So we've got to be careful making choices. You think, well, I'm just going to, I'll, I'll get on the other side of the fence and I'll just sneak over here and I'll do something. I'll come back, but there's a snare over there. There's a snare on the other side of the fence. Okay, so in, in Revelation 22, prophetic king to in. I'll try to come in for landing by 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. Revelation 22 and verse 14. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life. 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 I don't want to be in there. 
I don't want to be in church and be dead. Amen, Lord. Who wants to be in church and be dead for 40 years? Amen. Now, I'm going to say this, and, and don't take this the wrong way. I'm not bragging about this. In my heathen days, I knew, I knew how to drink large amounts of alcohol. Yep. Come in with this I knew how to use large amounts of very pure cocaine. Mm -hmm. I knew how to get high as a satellite. Yep. I knew how to use very large amounts of crystal meth. Yes. And get high as a satellite. Mm -hmm. I knew how to do that. But when I got saved, I found something better than any drug, Amen. any alcohol yes, Lord. I ever found. And I found the purest and the best drugs. Yes. But I found something better. Amen. When you find something better, it sets you free from something less than yes. And this morning, the Barefoot Prophets talks about there's a difference between the world. And he says, if we love the world, the love of the Father is not, not in, us. Us. In, us. in us. Okay, so that person may come to church and put their body in a church building, but they don't have the God of the church in them. Right. Okay, so that's the difference. If, if we love the world, then the love of the Father is not in us. And that's what saying in a scriptural way, in a better way than what I'm saying, we can put our bodies in a church building, but the God of the church not be in us. Okay, so blessed are they that do this commandment, that may have the right to the tree of life, that they may enter in to the gates of the city, for without are the, are the dogs which speak of the unclean, and the, and the source which speak of those that are under the influence of alcohol and drugs, and the whoremongers which speaks of all sexual sin, and murders and idolatry, and whoever loveth the make of the life. In closing, verse 18. It's about the third or fourth close. <laughs> Amen. Catching on. <laughs> you got me figured out. Verse 18. For I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add to these things, watch the, watch the curses. God shall add it in the plagues or the calamity, the heavy affliction, the stroke, or the wound, or the strife that's written in this book. And if any man take away the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. Can someone's name once be in the book of life and, and be raised? Yes. yes. Okay. God shall take away his part out of the book of life, out of the holy city, from the thing which are written in. We're close to it. Obey the Lord.